We stared at the Israelite encampment for over 3,300 years and saw the destiny of a nation. But through the lens of modern physics, we now see the blueprint of the universe encoded in that formation. In this excerpt from my podcast with Dr. Beryl Epstein, we utilize the standard model of particle physics to layer the map of subatomic particles over the 12 tribes. And the functional parallel is striking. But that leaves one massive unsolved problem. If the tribes are the particles, what is the hidden 13th element required to hold them all together? So you talk about the Higgs boson. Can you explain this that you have here carrier particles. Tell me what we're looking at here. We're looking at the Higgs boson and then the force carriers. And then we have different types of quarks and leptons here. And then that you connect it with the, the Israelite encampment. Can you explain all this? I'm just, it's very interesting that you have the 12 and you have the symmetry and my part of, I never really went so far into particle physics. So I'm more into astro realm, but it's always was interesting. I mean, you're into optics, but obviously this, so I'm curious, but you wrote it and researched it. So I'm just curious what these connections are. Sure. So the concept itself is an idea from Dr. Alex Burke. And I was curious, I thought I was looking at the standard model and thinking this is a very interesting, unique structure. There must be something in Torah that, that aligns up with. And so I, I looked and sure enough, there is, there is such a structure. And so I thought more about it and, and sort of came to an understanding that it, it's something very deep and, and very unexpected, this parallel. And I do a little statistical calculation in the book where I say, what's the likelihood that anything is going to correspond to this structure that, that we have in the standard model? And it, it's trivial. Like the probability is so small. You could take every word in the whole Torah and you're not going to find, you won't expect to find such a, or every, all the more so if you would take just every root, you, you don't expect to find such a structure being replicated. If you're enjoying this excerpt from my podcast with Dr. Epstein, be sure to sign up for my weekly newsletter so you don't miss out on a sneak preview of my upcoming book on the synthesis of Torah and science. The link is in the pinned comment below the subscribe button. And the, the structure itself in particle physics, so it, it's on the outside is your four groups of three, your, your three leptons, of which an electron is one of them, and your three lepton neutrinos. And then you have three quarks here and three quarks here, the different way you can divide it up either by positive charge and negative charge. And so the, the structure is always the same. And it's Dafka. It's not just like they made it this way because it looks visually appealing. And it's pretty. The, this Particle Fever movie I, I reached out to, they put me in touch with the director of the whole movie who, go ahead and use the, go ahead and use it. He's like, yeah, it's interesting. Between spirituality and particle physics, there's a lot of parallels. He was familiar a little. And so basically, why do we see this structure by the Machen? You're talking about there's one, four, and then 12. Correct, right. So on the outside, there's four sets of three. And the four on the inside, but not the center one, the four on the inside, they're, they mediate all the four forces of the universe. And gravity maybe is one of them. I have a question whether it should be four or five in the center there. So they mediate the interaction between all particles. So you have these matter particles, the quarks and the leptons, which all together form all your atoms and all the matter in the universe. And in these particles, all the interactions between them using the electromagnetic force and the strong force, the weak force. So they just, just sort of, you could think of it as exchanging particles, but exchanging uh, bosons between the, these particles, exchanging these force carrier particles. They like, they're like Malava. They like escort the particles and they escort them back. And that's how they communicate. And it brings particles together. Which you together. said was Levy in the book. Right, right. It's the same Lush and, it, and all the different uh, roles that these carrier particles play. It's very similar to the Levium in several ways in the Mikdash. And when I calculated the probability I did very conservatively, only like the, the minimum, you know, level of uh, comparison, but there's a lot, a lot of parallels there. And what's interesting is the whole machina, oh, the inside of this is the Higgs boson in your particle diagram. And that gives mass to everything. It, it's the... And that's the God particle you quoted. Right. They call it the God particle. And it not much lines up where the... Where the and it's not the room. first time physicists use God, like for the cosmic microwave background, it's the fingerprint of God. So <laughs> they're not immune from that. But anyway, sorry, go on. So you have the Higgs boson in the middle. And just very briefly, for those that don't know what the Higgs boson is. It, it gives mass to all particles and it has a scalar property. Everything about it is one. There's one particle that gives mass and it, it and in every direction, it looks the same. It's like very unique in that way. Because um, in the standard particle, right, there's this zoo of particles and here you have oneness. Right, that's and right in the middle of this diagram, and it's giving mass to everything, the source of all mass. 
And then here, so you have in the Machana that travels, these are the the four tri- the 12 tribes in, in the groups of three. And in the middle, you have the Levim and you have four or five groups also, depending on Moshe and Aaron, whether they're together one group. So then you'll have four or otherwise five. And in the center of that is the Mishkan. And uh, it's the dwelling place of Hashem, the God particle. It's supposed to be the particle, the place of fixation of where it dwells. And uh, in the book, people can see the different parallels. And I think the essential one is like, if there's any particle, what's unique about the, the Machina is that the, the Torah goes to great lengths to say, wherever Hashem said to go, the Machina went. Hashem said to stop, and it stopped, and they went for this many days, and they went for this many days. And uh, it very much, it goes through a lot of great detail to, to, to explain how whatever Hashem did, the Machina, Mamish did that. So if there's anything we need to learn that message about, if there's anything that, that we might think maybe it has a mind of its own, it'll do what it wants. So we think the particles of the universe, they're extremely lightweight and elusive, and, and they seem to fly wherever, all kinds of funky interactions, and who could even think what they're going to do? And there's infinite ones popping in and out of the vacuum, and this whole mess that's underlying all of matter. And, uh, and we see wherever Hashem says to go, it goes. And Mamish does the Ratzon of Hashem. And not only that, but it, every single thing we see in the world, is, ever, all matter is made up of these particles. And so what it says is not only these particles, but everything that's composed of them, the whole world just does what Hashem wants. Because if the, the particles within everything does what the Rebbe Shalom says, so everything in the world is just following the direction of Hashem. It, and it's sort of a, a unique message that comes out of this. Of so this, you just open up a can of worm home can of worms for free will. If you enjoyed this excerpt, click here to see the full podcast episode. And if you want to learn how quantum mechanics proves the Bible's age of the universe, click here. Thank you for partnering with me as we build this unshakable conviction together.